Go to tapjars.com to learn dreams, engage my services, and support the channel. I thought I'd show a bit of how this chat thing works. So I can add uh, messages and stuff, and I can add one-time messages that are special. And these other test messages, just to get more scroll to it. And I can scroll with a left stick, and um, page up and down, which means just like skip a certain amount, and then drag with R2 and stuff. So um, the first part without the drag is uh, fairly straightforward. And then the second part with the drag, that's kind of a more advanced topic that I'll tackle another time. All I've got from the original is just this chat thing so that I can, so it's just looks cool. Uh, each of these objects will be on like one, uh, its own like block, its own object with logic and all sorts of stuff. So let's just group those up and this will just be an invisible non-collidable block. Uh, just to hold our logic and everything in one place. Uh, cool. And then we have like a chip. So the main part of this is the scrolling that we're going to tackle in a minute. So uh, let's have a chip over here to contain our scrolling stuff. So we've got a variable called scroll. And that's all we'll do for now. And then this one will read that variable with a variable modifier, looking for the word, the name scroll, and that will get that value. And I'll just like display that here. Like that. Okay, so now we want to like edit this scroll in different ways. And I'll just do it with the left stick for now. And this, this method will be kind of simplified from what I actually do, because what I actually do is like, um, some more complex stuff to make it work really smoothly, but like I'm just teaching the basics. So in here we've got left stick local. So left stick is like when you push up, it's kind of a direction pointing away from the camera. And if I push right, it's pointing right on the camera, but we don't care about the camera. So we just want left stick local and then it won't be affected by any camera angles. And then if we split that with a splitter gadget, we can get the up down, oh, the up down and the left right separately. So now if we push down, we want this scroll to increase. So the idea is we have like the actual screen and we have a load of items that are like a big block like that. And it's got like different items and different sides and whatnot. And then the scroll is like how much we move this up. So scroll of zero is the here. Scroll of one is move that up a bit, two, three, four, and so on. So we want to increase this scroll to move all the items up on the, the like view we have. So, uh, so yeah, that's pretty straightforward. We just do variable modifier for scroll and you can use up and down on the d-pad to go through the variable names and then put y into the operation value and then make it add so this will be like a negative number if we're pushing up and positive number if we're pushing down so it will, it will subtract or add different numbers depending on how we're pushing it and then continuously while powered so scroll. oh this needs to be remote control as well so that we don't need to possess an object or something. So as I push down, scroll is increasing. And as I push up, scroll is decreasing up in the corner there. And if I push down just a slight bit, then we're moving down very slowly. And if I push it down a lot, it's moving down a lot faster. So that will be fine in a minute. And this will listen to that and use it to move where this is relative to the box. So um, first let's put the box in a useful place. I'll put it like at the bottom in the center of that um, sort of thing. So first I'll make a tag in the center as a reference point. Okay, uh, and we can move that later just as long as it's roughly in the middle, that's fine. Um, 
So this is like the origin point of all of the chat windows, all of the chat um, texts will appear there and then move their own uh, boxes up and down depending on the scroll. So now we want to teleport to that position with a teleporter gadget and we want to make sure that's mo that's affecting the whole group not just the block. So I'll remove that and then wire this into the uh, this apply to objects means the gadgets in here will apply to that object now. So the teleporter will teleport the group that we just connected it to. And then if we play time, oh, we need to set that to the uh, the right name. So we call that origin up and down the D-pad to get origin and we'll turn on orientation as well because uh, we could like rotate this whole thing or it could be like attached to a character or something. And this would still work because of this origin is um, moving with it correctly. So we'll turn that on and now that moves to the origin point. That's cool. And if we pause time, now we can see uh, this is uh, these lines are actually the outline of where we can see from this camera. So this starts off below where we can see. And then we'll use a keyframe. Uh, oh, we, yeah, we don't need that anymore. Scope in here. We use a keyframe to move this up until you can't see it at the top. Like that. Uh, if we just use a value slider to test. Um, if this was on completely, it will be all the way at the top. If we, if it was on just a little bit by sending it like 0.5 like that. So if we half power it, then it's halfway between the bottom and the top and full power and so on. So we can use this to, um, render this text at different points up and down. And we could do that based on this scroll amount. So if we just wire that into there. We don't need that. We don't need that. Then if we play time, then as we like increase the scroll, if I just go very slowly, you can see it moving up and down like that. And because that's like insanely fast, let's just multiply that by some small number. There we go. So as I push down on the on the left stick, then the text is moving up and then it will disappear at the top. And when it's at the very bottom and the very top, then we can just make it invisible. So um, to make this a little easier to kind of organize, I'm going to use a timeline and wire this into the playhead of the timeline. And just to demonstrate what that does. Um, as the value goes up from 0 to 1, 1 is at that end, and then 0 is down this end. So now we can say uh, the closer it is to this end, it will be higher. The closer it is to this end, it will just be the original place, which is at the bottom. And then right at the, uh, right at the start, we will skip in here. We will make it invisible. So turn off the text box, the border, shadow, make the text invisible. And now, um, but we don't want to, we could unpower it. But the problem with that, that is once when you, when it goes from unpowered to powered and it leaves this and tries to go to a, a particular spot, uh, sometimes there's a frame where it doesn't quite catch up because keyframes don't normally actually affect things that are powered off until they come on and then it says, oh, it's on and then applies itself to the object. So to avoid that kind of stuttering effect, we're going to just make things invisible instead. And then we just put the same at the end and we want that to be just right at the end. So uh, let's just uh, put those in the scene again so I can get in closer and we can use L1 and right to, to zoom in. You can see it kind of stretching like that. And then I can put that there. I'll make this a different color. It's uh, white for being invisible. And oh, oh, 
Get to the end, put that at the end. There we go. So, cool, and I guess that could be there. And then we can zoom it back down. And now you can see the, the text isn't visible until it's moving. And then the text isn't visible at the top either. And you could like expand these a little bit if you wanted. To test kind of the different positions of here, I'm going to turn on solo, which kind of ignores the fact that this is a timeline. It should be playing or controlled by the wire and things. And it just says activate whatsoever, whatever's in here and let us move the playhead as we wish. So I'm going to say it's visible around here and it's invisible before there. So around here, and we can like expand this out to go up to that point. Yeah, if we push down on the left stick, you never see it kind of suddenly pop in or pop out because it goes beyond the edges. So that's fine. Um, if like this was on some hollow UI thing, um, hovering behind the character or something weird like that, then you could say, as it goes up like that, we could fade it out instead. So like, if I copy that camera and turn the old one off, and then zoom out a bit, then we can say, as it gets to the bottom, it kind of fades out like that, fades in like that, uh, and stuff. But for now, I'm just making it full the screen, so that's fine. We probably want it to start with a particular initial amount. So that it's kind of near the top. There we go. So the first one starts at the top and that's kind of the minimum scroll that you can go to. So we can put that 0 0.8 as well. And now it starts there and I can't scroll down further than that. So I can't scroll further up than this because that's the minimum that variable can take. So if we have a second one, it will just display in exactly the same spot and you can scroll around and stuff, but um, they'll just be on exactly the same place and that's not what we want. So uh, I'll just uh, differentiate this one by changing its color to white, there we go. So we can see they're just rendering in the same position and that's not what we want. We want them to, this this uh, position to be lower. Uh, so at the minute it will show from a range of like 0.8 to, or this would be like 0.1 to 0.8 or something. But we want this one to show if the scroll is like more than that so if it's from 0.5 to 1.5 uh we'll give this a position and position just for the value slider and then we'll just add that to this so this is an item uh, and this is another item so this one's position is 0.5. That's like where it should be if we're right at the top. And then as the scroll increases, we want to pretend like the scroll is less increased because uh, as the scroll increases, everything moves up. So this would normally render here. And as the scroll increases, everything renders higher. But we want this one to pretend like it's already down here. So uh, in, if, it, if the scroll is bigger, then it will, look up, it will appear higher. So we want it to be start off lower and then increase from there. So if we start with like, um, if we subtract our position from the scroll position and use that instead, so like this is how far down the scroll it's going to start. Okay, and then 
Let's make it smaller. Uh, let's just pin the screen. Okay, and then it just starts there. And as we scroll around, it's it's matching, like the, it keeps the same distance or whatever, but still is affected by the scroll. Cool. So this is the position that we kind of have for where this should be rendered at, and it and then it renders it taking into the account the scroll still. Um, now when this gets activated, uh. What kind of position do we want it to be ideally? So we want this to be that amount of height down the page. So if this one, which is the first one we had, told this where the bottom the bottom of the scroll is, the bottom will be just up there. There's nothing to show, so there's no scrolling that needs to happen. When the first one appears, then the bottom should be there. And then when this one is added it should say okay the bottom's meant to be there so that should be my new position it'll move there and say that the new bottom is here below it again so each each one that's added will be added to the bottom of this list and know its own position in the, in the list so for that we need like a bottom uh, variable so i'll call this That's the bottom, and it starts. Uh, yeah, it'll start at point A as well. Uh, okay, and yeah, so these will start powered off first of all, and then when they get oh, let's just uh, copy that set up over here. And that just has the position of zero, so. When this gets powered on, we want some setup to happen. So for that, I usually use a timeline, which will just trigger any logic in here and get to the end, and then the timeline turns itself off. So if we have a variable modifier getting what the current bottom value is and a get mode, um, then that will send that value Let's make it smaller and zoom in. Now this is its own group in here, so it has its own scope. So we can actually give it its own variables. So if we give it its own variable called position, now if we have a variable modifier in here that sets that, sets position but only here then this will say oh that's a variable modifier that is in here mode and it's in the same group as uh, the variable is so I can be affected by it so only this one will have its position set by this and we just wire that into there to set the position to whatever the bottom was and that both of those we need to be powered on that first frame and then the next frame we will add to the bottom which is oh which is out here we'll add to that for how tall we think this is this chat thing is so this is the height of this item and we'll just wire that in uh and that will increase the bottom for whatever is made next, which will be that one. Uh, let's make a couple of switches. So we've got our first item and second item. That's the first item. That's the second item. Oh, we need to actually give it a height. So let's just give it a little height. There we go. So that, that should increase by 0.4. Now, and it did. And the position it got was 0.8 because that's the uh, original uh, bottom of it. And then this should do the same. So let's just copy that. So first one and second one. The second one didn't work. Uh, that's because we're not actually using the position. We're just storing it in here, but not using it in our calculation. So instead of a value slider, you just wire the position into there. And it works the same. Uh, 
Oh, that, does that need to start at zero, I think? Let's start that at zero. Okay, so that's appearing at the top. That'll appear at the top when we start it. And then the next one, when that activates, will have a position below it. But obviously, like, the height is a bit funny. So we just dial that in. I'll leave that on. Turn on a new one, and now it's showing right beneath it, and it needs a little bit more gap. Um, again, let's change that color. If we activate the white one first, and then the green one, then the green one will be below the lo the white one. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. Go to patreon.com/tapgiles to learn something new every day.